Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. In this session of Geography, we shall discuss the part 3 of the Earth topic that is theories related to Earth. So what are the different theories which are related to Earth, we shall see in detail. So first we have the first theory as continental drift theory and the second is plate tectonics. What is this continental drift theory? So continental drift means what is the origin for the continents to be formed on the Earth? So what is the reason for them to be formed? Are they same 200 years ago or are they different? So we shall discuss them about them in detail now. So first this theory was proposed by Alfred Wegener in 1915 through his book The Origin of Continents and Oceans. So in his book The Origin of Continents and Oceans he has mentioned this continental drift theory. So he says as per continental drift theory Alfred Wegener says the total continent or the landmass was single landmass around while the formation of the earth okay so while slowly the lithosphere hydrosphere and the atmosphere were formed on the earth the total landmass on the earth was a single body named pangaea and it was surrounded by a single ocean or all water ocean called as panthalassa okay so pangaea is a single unit of mass land mass it is called as Pangaea and it is surrounded by a single water body called as Panthalassa. This was a theory proposed by Alfred Wegener. So slowly this Pangaea was slowly it was disintegrating because this water body was slowly pushing the land masses. So it was creating a distinction between the land mass. Suppose this is a single land mass. So when I push water onto it, it may divide into two. So like that it also our Pangaea was also disintegrated into two one into Laurasia and another is Gondwana land. So this happened around 200 million years ago million means 10 power 6 that is 10 lakhs. So around 200 million years ago this continental drift in the Mesozoic era has the continental drift has happened slowly the disintegration of continents now we have seven continents right earlier it was only single landmass so slowly this has started to disintegrate because the water was continuously pushing the landmass and it was creating divisions okay i'll show you the figure you can see the figure in the first figure you can see the Pangaea single landmass cover, covered by a single water body called Panthalassa. Later it has disintegrated into two parts because of the water pushing onto the land. Laurasia and Gondwana land. So later these eras have happened and finally we have seven continents now because of the expansion of the universe. In the future after 200 years or 300 years we don't know what will happen right so this is the continental drift theory which explains the formation of different continents proposed by alfred wegener in the book origin of the continents and the oceans okay moving on to this continental drift theory explanation so this theory was accepted by many geographers and what is the reason for the continental drift what i already told you one is tidal force the tides of the ocean will push the landmass so that the landmass will be divided into different parts. Another reason is Coriolis force, or also called as, which is also called as pole fleeing force. What is this Coriolis force? See, I've already told you, Earth rotates from west to east on its own axis. So because of its rotation, the particles around it will also rotate. Suppose there is a ball. If it is static, the particles around it will not vibrate. Suppose if the ball is rotating, the particles around, suppose if I throw a dust particle, it will deviate from its direction because of the direction which made by the dust particles around the this tiny ball. See, when I rotate any ball, the some particles, some region around it will also vibrate around the ball. So in that region, suppose if I throw any wind, so wind instead of going in a straight direction it will divert either to right or left 
because of the rotation of the earth. So this force is called as Coriolis force. So Coriolis force is also responsible for the formation of continents as per the continental drift theory. Hope you understood this Coriolis force and also tidal force. The tides of the oceans and seas will constantly push the landmass and the continents will be formed. Then what are the evidences? Are there any proof? So when you see the South America and Africa, so they look like as if they were one. So as if that is called as jigsaw fit. So both will fit each other when we bring South Africa and Africa together. So now they are separated because of this continental drift theory. So this is one evidence and rocks are of same age on both sides of South America and as well as Africa. Even our Australia was under Gondwana land with Australia and India. So some uh, fossils of the animals were same of the same age in the Australia as well as India. Okay, so these are some of the evidences to prove the continental drift theory. So this explains the formation of continents. Moving on to next theory that is plate tectonics. This will explain how earthquakes and volcanoes will be formed. Various formations or the various landforms on the earth are formed because of mountains are formed because of this theory. So this theory explains every earthquake, volcanoes, mountains, all the landforms on the earth. So what is this plate tectonics? So plate tectonics was proposed by McKinsey and Parker in the year 1967. Later it was developed by Morgan in 1968. So what is this plate tectonics? So plate tectonics says that we have crust, mantle and core, right? So in this crust, so that crust is divided into several plates, okay? one plate one plate two plate three like that so they will be floating from one place to another because they have magma below them in the asthenosphere so because of the magma below them these plates will be keep on moving from one place to another so at the plate junctures between the two plates we have the plate juncture right so this at this juncture it is a weak point so at this juncture we have volcanoes, earthquakes, mountains will be formed. Okay, at the plate juncture. Suppose if we are in the middle of the plate, we are lesser prone to earthquakes or that's why in Nepal, which is at the juncture of the Eurasian plate and Indian plate, we have the more earthquakes and volcanoes. We shall see what are those plates which are available. Okay, so clear about plate tectonics. Earth's crust is divided into several plates and they will be floating or moving from one place to another because of the magma present below them which is liquid in nature so there are seven major plates in the world remember this is very important seven major plates in the world and there are several minor plates we shall also see about them so these are the seven major plates the first is antarctica and surrounding ocean plate north american plate south american plate pacific plate India, Australia, New Zealand plate, Eurasia, that is Europe plus Asia plate and Africa with Eastern Atlantic floor plate. We shall see all these in on diagram or picture. So remember all these seven major plates of the world. So we are on Indian, Australia, New Zealand plate. Okay. Moving on to minor plates. So there are some minor plates, Cocos plate which is between Central America and Pacific plate and uh, Nazga plate which is between South America and uh, Pacific plate and other Arabian plate, Philippine plate, Karolin plate, Fuji plate these are the minor plates okay so we shall see on diagram hope you can see the diagram see we are on Indian plate India, New Zealand and Australian plate we have Eurasian plate Europe plus Asia we have Pacific plate we have uh, North America South America plate Arabian plate hope you can see it right so these are the major and minor plates which are available this earth's crust is divided into several plates so both all of them will move from one place to another because the universe is expanding right so at the juncture of the two plates this is prone to the earthquakes and volcanoes okay that's why you can see uh, the Indian New Zealand plate and Australian plate is cutting around the New Zealand 
sorry it is cutting around the nepal right so the eurasian plate and nepal that's why nepal is more prone to earthquakes because it's a junction it is at the juncture of both eurasia and the india plate clear clear with this moving on to the force of the plate movement why these plates are moving i've already told you because they are present above the magma in the asthenosphere uh, magma is present right so magma is a liquid suppose if i play place some plates so plates will move from one place to another at different velocities okay next interaction of plates so because of the interaction of plates we have several landforms like volcanoes mountains trenches mid oceanic ridges we have mountains in oceans also because of these plate movements and there are three ways the plates will interact each other one is converging that means two plates will move together and next is diverging two plates will move away from each other next is transform boundary they will slide each other that is called transform boundary when they are converging one plate will move downward and one plate will move will be moving above another plate so crust will be lost and when they are diverging they are moving away from each other new crust will be formed like mid oceanic ridges in the oceans like that and when they are sliding neither crust is destroyed neither crust is nor crust is formed okay so this is about the theories related to earth we shall meet in the next sessions thank you so much